next guest is going to talk to us about smart meters. It's something that's coming at us from the federal government. It's a major push by the central government, but it's taking place at the local level. And she's going to talk to us about why you should be concerned and what you can do about it at the local level. Now, this is uh, Dr. Laura Presley. She has a PhD in chemistry. She's a business owner here in Austin, has run for city council, and she has over 17 years experience in semiconductor management, that sort of thing. Thank you for joining us. Hi, David. And thank you for your activism. Tell us a little bit about why you're concerned about smart meters. Okay, well, thank you. Thanks for what you guys do here at InfraWars and educating everybody about some issues that um, mainstream media really doesn't touch on most of the time. I started getting interested in the smart meter issue. It was about a year ago, and the Texas has the Public Utility Commission, and they were holding a hearing on issues and um, citizens that had issues with smart meters. And so I came out and I testified as a part of Texans for Accountable Government, and mostly just encouraging the industry, because of my background in semiconductors and, and the technology industry, to encourage them to please allow an opt-out program. Because, right. you know, it's just logical, it makes sense, and it just, people are concerned about privacy issues, health issues, why don't we just have an opt-out program? Seems very simple. Mm -hmm. And so, while I was at that Public Utility Commission testifying, I learned about the health effects, and I had not been really um, very knowledgeable on these health effects. I went home, looked at my meter on the outside of my house, and our, we have a smart meter, we live in Austin, Texas. We have a smart meter and it's facing our bedroom. Mm. Some people's face away from their house, ours was facing towards our bedroom. And what was interesting was my husband and I for several years, our smart meter got installed about 2009. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, a couple years, my husband and I were kind of joking with each other. We would say, when you go to sleep at night, you twitch. <laughs> and we're both engineers, right? And so we would kind of joke with each other. And I'm like, well, when you're asleep first, you, you twitch. And he goes, well, when you go to sleep first, you twitch. And we started counting the seconds between the body twitchings. So what happens, we would lay there and our legs would kick just mm. involuntarily while we were in the very beginning going to sleep. Mm. And every 25 seconds, this would happen. So I'm like, you know what? That is an external stimuli, yeah. electrical stimuli, Right. causing our bodies to kind of jerk. So we, and that makes sense, too, because we know that you can apply an electrical stimuli to a, a dead frog and you can make the leg <laughs> jump, right? So why can't you do that? I mean, that, that's a wire. People can see that right. being touched, but that can be done wirelessly. I mean, Tesla was looking at, at, at transmitting a major power wirelessly. <laughs> exactly. So. And so we were like, well, let's find the, the root cause of this, this electrical signal. We looked at several things. We looked at our compressor in our um, refrigerator, because it comes on and off every now and then, right? Mm -hmm. So what's going on and off around the house? I had a friend who had a, a meter that would measure radio frequency um, power densities. And I said, well, could you come out and let's mm -hmm. measure my smart meter? Let's see how, what that thing's doing. So we measured it. It was pulsing every 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. From an engineering standpoint, um, my PhD is in chemistry and physics, and my PhD was on the photon and electron-induced processes on metal surfaces. So this is exactly what's occurring with these smart meters. They're outputting this huge amount of radiation, radio frequency and microwave. Those are the, the frequencies that they're using. And it's affecting the electrical wires of our home. Mm -hmm. Not only is radiation coming out, you also have these pulses that are happening. So here we are, every 25 seconds my smart meter's pulsing and we're twitching, very consistent. From an engineering standpoint, that's a root cause identification of, mm -hmm. a, of an issue. So I called Austin Energy and I started at customer service. and went up the chain and I said, I want to opt out, I'm twitching, it's consistent with the timing of my smart meter going off. And we said, well, why don't you have Austin Energy engineers come out to our house and see if the thing is operating correctly. So we had several engineers come. <clears throat> Interestingly, they did not know their meters were pulsing every 25 seconds. They thought they were pulsing every maybe four to six hours, mm. once every four to six hours. So we helped show them with data in the little meter that we had mm -hmm. and um, kept going up the chain and saying, I want to opt out. I want to opt out of this. Um, this is bothering me. And so worked with Austin Energy, met with Larry Weiss, who is the CEO of Austin Energy, the general manager and his chief of staff, talked with them back and forth, and 
um, told them about the pulsings. They had their engineers come out and turn the pulse off, and our twitching stopped. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Perfect root cause analysis verification. You know, these are terms in and engineering. And when they turn the, the pulsing off, is it no longer working as a smart meter? How, no. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is the meter has this radio emitter mm -hmm. that actually, the, I, which I didn't know, they could come in and just completely turn the thing off, and it still reads your electrical usage, mm -hmm. but it's not sending the signal. They would have to get someone physically to come read it. So they turned it off temporarily so we could see if the twitching would stop. Mm -hmm. And it did. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Well, the all problem right. is, is, of course, they don't want people to opt out. They, this mm -hmm. is all being driven from the federal government. That's one of the reasons we're covering this. Right. It's not just a local issue. That's people right. are having this issue all over the country. They set a goal about 10 years ago. They wanted to get to about 50% coverage of smart meters. And their ultimate goal is to have 100%. Yes. The government does not like for people to opt out about anything. They've got a plan for us and they want to follow that. Now, we're going to focus primarily on the health issues because that's the hardest thing for people to see. Right. But there are, of course, economic issues. There are privacy issues that people are starting to understand. Economic issues are they're not doing it here yet. But we know that they're shutting down power generation capability all over the country and uh, raising rates. And one of the other things they're going to do to people is to say, in lieu of just across-the-board rate raising, say we're going to charge you more based on time of day use. Right. But they already know in Chicago that people can't adjust their schedule for those time of day uses. So it's just going to be a, a rate increase masquerading as something else. Because if you could change your usage, we wouldn't have rush hour traffic everywhere. Right. People are on a schedule for a reason. They have school, they have work. They don't have the option of adjusting when they use that, that power. So that's just going to be a rate increase. So people can understand that. They can see what's behind that. They can understand now with all the NSA stuff, the privacy issues. But it's very difficult for people to notice First of all, like you, you know, we were talking just before the interview, you don't taste it, you don't smell it, you don't see it, and sometimes it's very difficult to see the effects of it. That's right. You were able to see that. That's right. And, you know, it's interesting, like you said, you can't, these radio waves and microwaves, when your microwave is, co is cooking your food, mm -hmm. you don't see any radiation. That's right. You, it's not That's red, right. it's not purple, it's nothing. Good um, analogy, because people... What, people on so many different issues, whether it's major power lines or whether it's cell phones or now these smart meters, people don't want to believe that that's the issue right. and they can't see it and they get a lot of pushback from the industry saying it's not a problem, don't worry about it. And yet you can see it with microwaves. You, you know, if, right. if people think about that, they can see the potential here. That's right. And what's interesting is the radiation these meters put out are radio frequency about 900 megahertz, which is what your phones use. But it also has another band of microwave radiation, same frequency and energy as your microwave oven. Mm. Exactly. Mm. It's just about lower. How many watts is it? Yeah. Um, the, the, the power densities that, that are coming out um, are about, it's really interesting. They've said that the, the energy from your uh, smart meter is mm -hmm. is just the same as your cell phone. That is absolutely not true. I've measured it. We have a meter here. I want to show this. Yeah, show people what so the meter looks have, like. We have a power density meter. This thing measures um, down to 800 megahertz up to 2.5 uh, gigahertz, which is the range that is used for these smart meters. And what we measured with this is 30,000 microwatts per meter squared. And think of your body as a meter square surface area. Think of that. So you've got this power density hitting you, 30,000 microwatts. Your phone ranges from 50 to maybe 1,000. Mm. So this thing wow. was measuring three, 30, see, 30 times. times higher than your the phone. Max, yeah. So do not let these people tell you that it's the same radiation as your phone because it's not. We've measured it. Mm -hmm. So again, you can't smell it, you can't hear it, and you can't taste it. But I'm telling you what, your body subconsciously is feeling it. It, it, it actually does. The twitching was a manifestation of the jolt that we were getting. And Two things I want to I want to really describe the mechanisms of how these smart meters work, and how they affect our health. The first is the radiation. I think everybody that's easy for everybody to understand. This radiation is going out; it's sending the signal, and that's measurable. This is that's not something that this. is just it's a absolutely measurable. conspiracy theory. It is oh no, <laughs> it's a measurement. It's, it's chemistry and physics. Yes. It's data, yes. so you can measure it with these meters. And, and that's the signal they're sending, you know, 500 feet away to these concentrators on the power lines for the data that they say, well, this is how much energy you're using and this we're going to bill you at the end of the month.
So easy, no question about it. The second one is a little more subtle mechanism. What happens is this huge pulse, I'm gonna go, that's a huge pulse that goes out of this um, smart meter. You're, think about how the meter works. You've got the big meter, you've got the wires coming through it that carry the current to your house. Mm -hmm. That radiation causes electron excitement in those circuitries. So you get a pulse of electron current. So you have voltage, noise all through your house. When that meter sends out that radiation pulse, you get an electrical pulse in the house all through the circuitry of your home, mm -hmm. surrounding you as you sleep. So again, every 25 seconds these meters are going off pulsing. That's over 3,000 pulses a day. Mm. All right, it's a huge number of pulses. Our bodies have not evolved to manage that and manage the radiation or manage those electrical pulses. So there's another little show and tell I wanna show. This is a um, Graham Stetzer um, analyzer. This measures the electrical noise that's going on in your home. So you have two things, the radiation and the electrical noise. You can buy um, Stetzer filters. They're $35 each, they're not cheap. Mm -hmm. But this is an easy solution, if you have the money, mm -hmm. the financial means to do it, to reduce that electrical noise from your smart meter. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is our power. We talk about, you know, what, what can we do? This is right, what we right, can do. Exactly. So this is one thing. It's kind of like putting a fluoride fil getting fluoride filters. You know, you can it's try to fight thing. them from putting fluoride in exactly. the water, but ultimately you have to do something yourself yes. you until, until that fight's won. So. Freedom is not free. I, right. I love that, that right. quote. Thank you so much for your activism. Thank you. Appreciate it, Laura. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, winning the fight for health and for privacy and for keeping the country from falling in, into economic ruin is really a struggle for information. As Laura Presley just pointed out, it's a question in many cases of informing people what's really going on, telling them what the risks are, getting them to understand that. We have several tools for that. We have the new InfoWars magazine for people who are inclined to look at things in print. And we also have Prison Planet TV. A subscription there helps to get the information out. Ten people can share that with you at a time, and it helps to support our operation. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7, 8 central. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show.